All right, let's take you now to the President of the United States. This challenge and these opportunities are going to be met by working people in every nation. And as we transition to a clean energy future, we must ensure that workers who have thrived in yesterday's and today's industries have as bright a tomorrow in the new industries, as well as in the places where they live, in the communities they have built. When we invest in climate resilience and infrastructure, we create opportunities for everyone. That, uh, that's uh, the heart of my jobs plan that I propose here in the United States. It's how our nation intends to build an economy that gives everybody a fair shot. As you heard in the last session, it requires investing in innovation. That's why I've asked the Secretary of Energy, my Energy Secretary, Jennifer Granholm, who you saw earlier, to speed the development of critical technologies to tackle the climate crisis. No single technology is the answer on its own, because every sector requires innovation to meet this moment. You know, this critical effort is going to propel the most impactful breakthroughs at home and around the world and lower the cost of, of we're, we're paying now for polluting the air so badly. We're going to move to net zero in a transition in all countries. And look, every country will need to invest in new clean energy technologies as we work forward and uh, to deal with net zero emissions. I am also very proud to announce that the United States is again becoming a key leader in mission innovation. We helped launch the program during the Obama-Biden administration, a pact between the world's largest economies to, to ramp up investments in clean energy research and development. And today, America is once again stepping into the leadership role. We will be joining in a partner for the nations in efforts to decarbonize critical sectors across the board, including industrial sector, where we'll join with Sweden and India in, leadership, in the uh, leadership group for, uh, for industry transition. The power sector, where we'll work alongside of the United Kingdom to spread progress and speed it up toward a carbon-free power system, both here and around the world. And in agriculture, the agricultural sector, where we'll launch the Agriculture Innovation Mission for Climate with the United, with, with United, Arab, United Arab Emirates and other partners. We also, I'm very heartened by President Putin's call yesterday for the world to collaborate and advance carbon dioxide removal. And the United States looks forward to working with Russia and other countries in that endeavor. It has great promise. This is a moment for all of us to build better economies for our children, our grandchildren, and all of us to thrive, to thrive in not just now, but beyond for, for the next generations. Nations that work together to invest in the cleaner economy will reap rewards for their citizens. The United States is committed. We are committed to making those investments to grow our economy here at home while connecting with markets around the world. For example, we're launching a new global partnership for climate smart infrastructure. This will create good paying jobs here in America by supporting development of new clean infrastructure in our partner countries. These are the sort of partnerships that are going to be good for all of us. And I think they'll have additional benefits just for us working together. And today, I'm excited to welcome my counterparts in Spain, Nigeria, Vietnam, and Poland to share their thinking on how to realize the economies, of, the economic opportunities of the climate response. And we're going to be joined by labor and business community leaders from around the world to talk about what's happening in their communities around climate-related jobs. And I'm pleased to be joined by Secretary Buttigieg, Ambassador Tai, and National Climate Advisor Gina McCarthy, the chair of my National Climate Task Force. I look forward to our conversation and making more progress, more progress throughout the day. Thank you.
Uh, well, there you have the president kicking off day two and the final day of the Leaders Summit on Climate, um, where he is essentially having a massive Zoom calls with leaders from all around the world. But today, what's different is uh, there are uh, leaders of industry that are being folded in, CEOs. Um, Bill Gates is uh, a featured speaker, as well as Mike Bloomberg. Also, union leaders uh, for steel workers, for electrical unions, uh, people working in industries that will be impacted by a move toward towards a greener energy, as well executives from uh, solar companies as well. So we'll continue to sort of keep an eye on the conversation there and bring you any news as it becomes uh, available to you.